Hi, my name is Chris Van Dusen. I'm the illustrator of the Mercy Watson books and the new series Tales from Deckerwood Drive, all written by the fabulous Kate DiCamillo. My earliest memory is, I remember when I was, gosh, I must have been about four or five. I, um, I did a drawing of this face in a, in a book. I found this paperback book in my house and there, I found a blank, blank page and I drew this face. It was sort of an oval face with these weird eyes. It was just very simple. But I remember I drew the eyes and I drew these crosshair through the eyes and I thought at the time that was like so cool. And so my, and I like ran and I showed my mom. I said, look, look at my drawing. And my mom is great. She, and she was very encouraged. She said, she said, you know, that's a beautiful drawing, but you probably shouldn't be drawing in the books, <laughs> you know, which is kind of funny now because that's what I do for a living. I draw pictures in books. But that, that's my, probably my earliest recollection of doing a, a drawing that, was, that I felt at the time was fairly successful. The new series, Tales from Deckwood Drive, uh, feature black and white illustrations. And so I really wanted to sort of capture the feeling of the original Mercy Watson series and the illustrations in the new Tales from Deckwood Drive. So I was kind of wondering how the best way to do that. I, I sort of experimented with doing sort of pencil drawing or um, like a charcoal drawing or something, or even like a pen and ink and wash. And I ended up doing illustrations that were very similar to the original series. I did gouache paintings. Gouache is a opaque watercolor. And, uh, but instead of using a full range of colors, I just used black and white. And I think they really captured the feeling of the original series in the new books. And it's just great to bring the characters back to life and just see them in whole new adventures. Perfect reader for Tales from Deku Drive. Uh, I sort of imagine them being uh, like uh, seven, eight, nine-year-old kids um, just wanting to go on sort of this crazy adventure because Kate's known for her doing these crazy adventures. But there's also this incredible warmth to these stories, and I don't know how she gets it in there. I mean, I read, there's a new one uh, that I've done sketches for, the third book. And I actually sort of teared up when I was reading it. So, I mean, they're really touching. But I think probably the ideal reader is like either boy or girl, like 10, 9, 9 years old. I think they'd really, really enjoy these, this series. One of the best pieces of advice I got when I was starting out illustrating books um, is I was, offered a I was offered to illustrate a story. And I was sort of on the fence because I read the story and I thought, well, the illustrations could be sort of fun, but I wasn't sure I really loved the story. So I called a friend of mine who's also an author illustrator. And I asked her, I said, a publisher offered me this story to illustrate this book. And I'm not sure if I should take it. And she just cut me right off. She said, do you love the story? And I said, well, I'm not really sure I love the story. And then she cut me off again. She said, don't do it. And I said, well, how can you say How can you just say, don't do it? And she said, because it'll show in your artwork. Unless you absolutely love this story, it's going to show in your artwork. And so I've always, the books I do, I have to love this story first before I do the illustrations. One of the most um, uh, interesting responses I've got when I've read my books in public, I was at a daycare center in my hometown. And uh, the kids were all sitting on the floor, and these were, these were very young kids. And I started reading the book, and I was standing up front, and I started reading the book, and I heard them sort of murmuring, and I, and I wasn't quite sure what was going on. They weren't like talking, they weren't bored and talking to each other. They were looking at me, but they were kind of murmuring as I was reading. And as I got a few pages into it, and I realized they were all reciting the book. Now, these are kids that can't read yet but they'd memorized the book and they're all reciting, <laughs> reciting the book. And it was like, we were going along and they were just right in time with my reading. And I was just amazed. I was like, oh my gosh. And it really made me realize at that point, the influence, you know, I have when I write these stories. I mean, if kids memorize them, you know, they, I have to do a good job. Yeah.
Probably the thing in my studio that, that, that kids are attracted to, first of all, are, um, well, I just, uh, on the stairs going up the street, my studio is in a barn attached to my house. And you go out through my kitchen and you go to the back, sort of back landing, and there's a stairs going up to the studio. And we just added this, it was actually my wife Lori's idea. Uh, on the risers, I've reprinted up giant decals of the spines of my books. And so when you come out the door from the kitchen and you turn to go up the stairs, it looks like you're walking up a stack of my books, which is really cool. And kids go, whoa. But then when they get up to the studio, uh, I have a lot of toys all, all around. And, and probably the most prominent is on my flat files where I keep my artwork and projects. I have about 25 old toy robots and uh, they're all lined up there, you know, in, in uh, different sizes. And the kids always just go over. And uh, if the kids are really good, I'll pull out the batteries and we'll fire them up and they'll be walking and lighting up. And, you know, it's just, it's just kind of fun. And it's, and it's really, it's a really neat display too with all that sort of retro 50s stuff that I love so much. Mm -hmm.